Hey there everyone, this is Michael Dugo, the Nootropic Reviewer, and during this video today, you're going to learn 50 things that I've learned from growing this channel to 50,000 subscribers, because there were things that I used to believe about nootropics that I no longer believe. So I'm gonna share with you all the insights and you're gonna have a clear idea as far as how you're gonna move through your nootropic journey moving forward. And the very first takeaway is that the side effects of nootropics are exaggerated. And I have learned that a lot of people just don't get into nootropics for the simple reason that they're too scared about whatever negative side effects can occur. But if you do uh, take the time to research whatever nootropic supplement you do have interest in, you'll get to know that the side effects in most cases really aren't that bad and just follow the general rule of thumb that, that the stronger the nootropic is, often the stronger the side effects may be as a result. Uh, the takeaway number two I wanted to share was that nootropic blends are still relevant. As a matter of fact, I still do take a number of nootropic blends. I don't take them every day, but more so I can use them when I'm out of town and I don't want to bring all my nootropic bottles along with me. You can find some formulas out there where they've done a great job just um, compiling a number of ingredients into the product. Maybe it is a little bit more expensive, but um, convenience makes it all that worthwhile. And the third thing that I've learned is that most nootropics are okay to take fasted. There are, are of course, some that you would want to stay away from, uh, being Tonkat Ali, um, green tea extract, fish oil, especially in high doses. But the majority of them you can actually take fasted. Of course, make sure to do your due diligence. Watch my videos on that specific compound first. And the fourth thing I've learned is that nootropics can help you to achieve your physique goals. Nootropics will often help you to help your energy levels. They'll help you especially with your focus when it comes to your workout. Uh, the fifth thing I've learned is that there's a nootropic for nearly everything. Some people just start taking nootropics thinking that uh, they can use nootropics to improve their memory, but then they come to find out nootropics may also help them to relieve stress, to learn things in a faster fashion, to help with their processing speed, and even help them with things like sleep quality. The sixth thing I've learned is that building a nootropic stack requires you being dedicated to being consistent. If you are not going to be consistent with a nootropic regimen, you are probably wasting your money since a number of nootropics do take a little bit of time for them to start working. Don't judge a nootropic based on how you feel after you take it. You're gonna be better off in most cases judging the nootropic after a couple of weeks of continued use. Um, the next takeaway is that stimulants are to be used strategically. And I really am a strong believer that stimulants should be used in moderation. The lower you can go with your stimulants, the better. For me, I'm pretty much only using stimulants prior to working out because they're really gonna help me to achieve a much greater workout than I would have had without the stimulants. And me getting a better workout will result in me, in most cases, having a more productive day there afterwards. And then of course, I can use nootropics in order to help me during those times that I feel a little bit of an energy crash because with stimulants, your energy goes up, but then we know afterwards it does come down and that comes along with a lot of brain fog and confusion. Um, the next takeaway would be that nootropics can help really help with any work occupation. Whether you're an engineer, whether you're a salesperson like myself, I sell residential real estate. I find that there are certain nootropics that help me with verbal fluency. There are some nootropics that also help me with learning. So I think it's great in all kinds of contexts. And one of the next things I've learned is that lion's mane, lion's mane mushroom, we know it's a very popular nootropic supplement. It can help to um, open your mind like no other nootropic can. You'll find that when you ingest lion's mane, you suddenly become more curious about subjects that you were never originally interested in the first place. And I have yet to find any nootropic that can deliver with that same intended benefit. Uh, the next takeaway is that even those with a great memory can still see their memory improve by the use of nootropics. Uh, there's a couple which I like specifically, Bacopa and Paracetam that I have found really help with my memory. And I really think that those two nootropics are great for people with really bad memory, like a medium level memory, but even those people with a really advanced memory that seem to be a sponge and can just recall anything pretty effortlessly. Our next takeaway is that there is no replacement for caffeine. We have seen a lot of trending nootropics out there that claim to be the best substitute for caffeine. Some of those include theocrine and dynamine. It's really a compound that helps boost energy, mood, motivation, and focus. Uh, however, I have not found that they come anywhere comparable to caffeine. Uh, the next takeaway, of course, I've learned is that viewers want a magic pill. Um, many viewers have seen that famous movie Limitless and they're hoping to find a nootropic supplement out there that can give them that game-changing result. And just trust that if you find a stack, uh, don't have expectations like your life is gonna change overnight because it really won't. But I've been using nootropics for many years and I have seen myself accomplish some things that I did never know I was capable of or never even thought that I'd be making a YouTube channel. Like it's pretty cool what the use of nootropics and hard work can enable you to do. If nootropics can help you to work just 20% harder every single day, think about the accumulation effect that you get from that moving forward. Um, the next takeaway I've learned is that you should seek nootropics 
that are good to take daily. Don't just look at the nootropics that are good to take on those emergency situations when you're cramming for an exam. Look at something safe because often these are going to be the same supplements that you would be comfortable recommending to your friends or even your parents. These are good for you in most cases long term. There's no, It's never a nice feeling taking a nootropic and in your heart of hearts knowing that it's not healthy for you long term. And that's usually going to be the case when it comes to nootropics you would take a few times a month or somewhat infrequently. And my next takeaway is that racetams are very difficult to dose because we all seem to respond differently. And yes, we believe that about other nootropics too, that people respond differently, but this is to a totally different magnitude with the racetams. I'm talking every individual is a little bit different. So a few favorites are paracetam, aniracetam, oxyracetam, and pramaracetam. Yet I really did have to try different things in order for me to find a routine that I could stick with long term. And I'm very grateful as those few nootropics have really helped me with focus and productivity. And my next takeaway, and I hate to say it is that there is still a lack of research on the majority of nootropics. You're able to Google some nootropics and find a good study, but with the majority of nootropics, unfortunately, we are still relying on good old anecdotes, which are good. And the next takeaway is that most nootropic vendors out there will overhype their products. Of course, they're in marketing, they're in sales, that's what they'll do. The next takeaway is that the stimulants will always be the most noticeable. Whether it's caffeine, theocrine, dynamine, um, modafinil, phenylparacetam, they raise that alertness and that will happen. But that's not the reason why we get into nootropics. We're not really looking for energy. We're looking for productivity. We're looking maybe for better memory, better recall, better uh, verbal fluency, and so forth. The next takeaway is that most anti-anxiety nootropics do decrease motivation. Some examples of that would be ashwagandha or would be bacopa, for instance. The next takeaway is that uh, the newer nootropics are often the least effective nootropics. Like people often ask me, Michael, what do you think of some of the newer nootropics? And really, I don't talk about them much because they're not that good. What am I going to make a video talking about something that doesn't work? Wouldn't make for a very interesting video. Uh, my next takeaway is that nothing compares to Adderall for focus. If you're looking for nootropics that can give you that Adderall-like feeling, sorry, it will just not happen. The next takeaway is that um, ashwagandha will probably not lead you to be more productive. I think it's more so better for stress management, for decreasing anxiety levels. Some people use it for improving their testosterone levels or for improving their sleep quality, which can happen. Uh, my next takeaway is that modafinil side effects can be reduced. And I've talked about specifically the protocol in which I use modafinil in this video here to minimize some of the side effects with respect to it causing insomnia, it causing headaches, it causes you to be somewhat socially isolated. You'll likely find that helpful. Um, my next takeaway is that most nootropics do not blunt creativity. And some people talk about, okay, nootropics can make me feel different or can stop me from being creative because I'm just too focused. A lot of nootropics, they're not really like that. My next takeaway is that choline is a great nutrient, yet we have different choline needs. Some people need to take more choline than others in order for them to get the intended benefit of ensuring that they're operating in an optimal fashion or close to optimal. My next takeaway is that uh, caffeine tolerances vary from one individual to the next. Like me, for instance, I don't build a caffeine tolerance. As a matter of fact, I've taken caffeine almost every single day within the past couple of years and, I, and like 100 milligrams still will get me wired. My next takeaway is that the placebo effect is still a real thing. So if you take a nootropic and you get the placebo effect, I don't see it as a bad thing. Maybe it'll make you believe you have superpowers and you'll perform better at work. The next takeaway is that your peer group will not support your nootropic use. You may want to be a bit careful about sharing with others that you're using nootropics. They may discourage you and it still does happen. You can consider sharing this channel with them to hopefully open their mind. But some people, unfortunately, they will just be against it as they're a bit stubborn and closed minded in their beliefs. My next takeaway is that L-tyrosine is still better than N-acetyl-L-tyrosine. You'll often see both products and wonder which one's worth buying. N-acetyl-L-tyrosine, very short lasting, so I prefer L-tyrosine. Um, my next takeaway is that one study is never enough to determine how beneficial a nootropic is. Uh, for some products out there, it's marketed with one study backing it, although they don't have a second study and maybe that first study was funded by the company that's marketing the product, which is obviously biased. Um, my next takeaway is that examine.com is a great resource for looking up nootropics. They don't have too many nootropics out there, but examine.com, they've nicely like compiled them in a nice organized fashion so you can see what a nootropic can specifically do or not do. My next takeaway is that there could be a difference between taking nootropics in the powder form versus the capsule form, which I had no idea about, but I found this specifically with Tonkat Alley, and I've talked about uh, Tonkat Alley in this video right here about its benefits with, with building testosterone levels and specifically helping around strength training. It's great. My next takeaway is that um, consuming a number of nootropics is probably not too much. People often ask me this question, Michael, if I take this and that, is it too much? It's usually not, but I would recommend that you watch more of my videos and understand how to build a stack. My next takeaway would be that 
Just because a nootropic is naturally occurring does not mean it is healthy. People think, okay, this nootropic is man-made and this nootropic is naturally occurring, like it's herbal, therefore it's safe. That's not always the case. There's some pretty uh, bad nootropics out there, although they're, uh, for example, just like grown on a tree. The next takeaway is that there is no advantage of mega dosing anything. I used to think there are some nootropics and if you just take a whole lot of them, you'll get like this incredible benefit. It's never happened. I mega dosed fish oil once. I would never recommend it. I had nosebleeds. Yes, my cardio was great. I was able to run a lot easier, but wasn't worth some of the side effects. The next takeaway is that caffeine stays in your system for longer than you think. It's very common that people ingest caffeine for at five or six o'clock, but they still find that it does affect their sleep in a negative way during that night. The next takeaway would be that uh, the nootropics that you would use for learning are often counterproductive for executing. So you can think of some nootropics like bacopa and even to some extent paracetam. So think about bacopa for instance, it does make you great at learning when it comes to retention, reading, um, your memory is really, really good long term, but it's not the greatest thing when it comes to actually being productive and executing on those tasks as they don't appeal to you as much and you feel somewhat demotivated. Keep that in mind because motivation is critically important that you actually look at to what extent is a nootropic helping your motivation versus hurting it. And most people just don't know about that. And the next takeaway is that melatonin is still one of the best nootropics to improve sleep quality. We know that it, it allows us to sleep in a much more deeper fashion. It allows us often to sleep for a lesser amount of time. But what is important is the dosage and the brand of melatonin that you take. And of course, don't take it too often. That's one of the few supplements that I would use maybe like a couple times a month, if that, just very infrequently. Uh, the next takeaway is that most people don't know what the word nootropic means. Just think about, about it in simplicity, like a supplement to help you um, improve your cognition, have better cognition, whether it's recall, whether it's memory, whether it's execution, like energy levels and sleep. And uh, where nootropic maybe wouldn't be used is um, in the context of like building a better physique because I think of like supplements for fat loss or supplements for building muscle, not really in that nootropic category, more so nootropic encompasses brain. The next takeaway is that uh, there is almost always a replacement if the nootropic that you seek is not available. So a lot of people say, Michael, I can't find this nootropic. I don't know where to get it from. There's in most cases an alternative. Just watch the video on it and you'll find some which fits uh, whatever benefit you're looking for there. And my next takeaway is that creatine is a very overrated nootropic. Uh, people thought that it was a nootropic. They thought it could help them when they're sleep deprived and maybe, maybe to some extent lower their cortisol levels. But I think more so it can help you get a little bit more energy, feeling better, usually not because the thing about creatine is as you ingest more creatine, you need to drink more water. And a lot of people just aren't drinking enough water in the first place or eating water rich foods that they're feeling a little bit dehydrated with creatine. And that's especially myself. And my next takeaway, you guys are going to love this one. If a nootropic seems too good to be true, it might be but it might not be. There's a lot of cases that people like look up a nootropic, it seems like the end all be all, the best thing ever, and they take it and they are still really satisfied with the results after a couple weeks. Now, I'm not saying that a nootropic is gonna make you like a million bucks overnight, that's not what I'm saying, but long term, some nootropics can do really good things, and I've met people on this channel that really thank me to this day for introducing a specific nootropic to them. The next takeaway is that the best nootropics are also some of the most affordable nootropics. So I'm seeing right now, there's a lot of newer nootropics. They're uh, priced pretty high, so a lot of people aren't trying them, but they're hyped up to be the best thing ever. And what so is, uh, if you look up like some of the staple nootropics that I've talked about on a number of my videos, Lion's Mane, Rodeo, La Rosea, Bacopa, uh, Paracetam, Nupep, they're pretty affordable. So that could just give you some guidance when you're looking at something in the cost. And the next takeaway is that there is no optimal diet to follow to make the best use of nootropics. Some people think, okay, if I follow a specific diet, maybe I'll feel the nootropics more so. I don't really think so. I think it's important that you have a diet that's rich in micronutrients. Of course, it hits your carbohydrate, fat, and protein requirements, but as well, um, for every calorie that you're consuming, you're getting a good amount of nutrition along with it. But can it be said that if you were to like ingest some foods over another, you would feel like specific nootropics more so? Not really. Some people believe like black pepper extract can help to do that. Hasn't been my experience. The next takeaway is that um, anecdotes can help guide you. So use Reddit, use Discord uh, or my Discord. Of course, look up a lot of my videos because people have found that when they read up enough anecdotes, at least it gives them some idea of what they should be taking or what they should not be taking and just what dosage protocol or side effects they should be aware of. The next takeaway is to avoid nootropics that provide a short-term mood boost. So 5-HTP, for example, makes you a little bit happy. It boosts serotonin levels. But what the problem is that is like you're putting a bandage on a problem 
I would much rather have you build resilience, build thick skin, have some good mindset practices, say affirmations, surround yourself with positive people. Hey, heck, watch my videos or watch the videos I make on my Instagram where I, I, where I talk about sales training and I talk about uh, mindset. Something I love about sales is it's all about mindset. And so lean into it that way. Nootropics, yes, they can have their place when it comes to stress management, but should you really be taking nootropics to make you happy? No, I think then you have a bad addiction. Uh, the next takeaway is that anti-aging supplements are expensive and you probably won't notice them working. Do I still think they're necessary? Maybe, I think if you can afford them, I think that's great. But if you have this idea that I'm gonna take an anti-aging supplement and notice the benefit, probably doesn't happen and uh, you'll be very disappointed. But there is a good purpose around taking anti-aging supplements. Alpha lipoic acid is great, resveratrol is great. Uh, the next takeaway is that some nootropics are better consumed under the tongue. A couple of examples of that would be Nupept, for instance, if you were to just take 10 to 20 mil grams of Nupep, put it right under your tongue, allow it to sit there for a good 30 seconds. If there's anything left, then then swallowing it. And same thing with phenylparastam. I'm doing that with about 100 milligrams of phenylparastam. I can feel it much more stronger in comparison to taking the capsule. I can maybe feel it like two to three times better. So I love that. Um, the next takeaway is that nootropics in many cases are good to consume during any time of the day. So there are some supplements which you may be better off taking them pre-workout, but provided that the nootropic doesn't keep you up, doesn't cause insomnia, isn't too strong of a stimulant, there's very often scenarios when you can use it in different times of the day and you'll see the benefit from it that way. Like magnesium, some people love it in the morning and some people swear by taking it before bed to help them with sleep that way. The next takeaway is that the daily dosage recommendations on nootropic bottles are usually accurate. This was a bit of a surprise for me, but uh, when you look at like some of the greatest vendors out there and like the supplement facts and their recommendations as far as how often you should take it, um, if the dosage isn't right, usually the serving size is right. But of course, watch my videos if you would like the thorough explanation as far as um, how much to take, when to take it in detail. And my next takeaway would be that if a testosterone boosting supplement is working, you'll probably notice it working within a few days. You should feel uh, better sleep, better energy levels, better strength in the gym. So you don't have to wait like a whole 30 days for you to properly evaluate if you should go ahead and get it again. You'll, you'll notice it pretty quickly. And I've talked all about optimizing your testosterone levels and boosting those levels in this video over here. We covered diet, uh, we covered training, and of course the best nootropics for that. And if you all did find this information helpful, be sure to subscribe if you are a returning viewer. Tell me what's one of your takeaways. I'd love to know. And of course, I appreciate you all so much. I can't believe we've hit 50,000. And my goal is to continuously provide education to make this whole nootropic journey a lot easier for you. And be sure to join our Discord server where we have a 24 seven chat room and can answer your questions in a very time sensitive fashion. The link for that is in the description box below. I appreciate your interest in nootropics and I'll look forward to seeing you all next time.